Friday in Tryon, North Carolina, and again trying to race through to get ready for a family visit. And uh, we're looking at Lee Strobel, an atheist at the time that he did a two-year study to try to find out if uh, his wife becoming a Christian was a valid kind of a faith. And uh, being a lawyer himself, a graduate of Yale University, he goes about it in a legal way, investigating the evidence. And so far we've looked at uh, eyewitnesses, the writers of the gospel, documentary evidence, collaboration, scientific or archaeological evidence, rebuttal of the major challenges against the gospels and against the claims of Christ, psychological experts uh, you know, checking to see did Jesus really believe that he was Christ or God in the flesh. And we've been following a focal vet passage from 2 Peter 1.16, for we did not follow cleverly devised fables, but we, when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So we have looked at a number of PhDs on all of these subjects, and today we look at another PhD, uh, this time his name is Gary R. Collins, and uh, he has a degree from the University of Toronto in Purdue, and uh, he is a psychologist, uh, and, and, and so he takes on the look at what we had to come to the conclusion if Jesus said he was God, if he said he was the Christ, was he crazy? Uh, many pastors have preached the message, liar, lunatic. Or Lord, which is he? Is he a liar? Is he a lunatic? Or is he Lord? And so that's the issue we're looking at today. Is he a lunatic? Is he crazy? And uh, so uh, Gary Collins has done a, a marvelous job of answering that question. Um, even though the Bible itself says some of the people that lived in Jesus' day thought he was crazy. Uh, we find that clearly in Scripture. Uh, but the answer is quite clear when you examine uh, Jesus and what he's done and what he said. Uh, the proof becomes quite evident. First of all, Jesus does not fit the psychological profile of someone that is crazy. Uh, and uh, that's very important that we realize that he has no evidence of delusions. Uh, if he said he's going to do something, he did it. Um, and unlike the people that say, look, I can fly and then crash to the ground. Uh, and even the critics themselves answered and said, uh, could someone crazy do the things that he's done, the miracles that he's done? And uh, we also need to understand that uh, when he is uh, involved in these activities, he's not a hypnotist, as some have claimed that uh, the feeding of the 5,000 was an illusion and he hypnotized the whole crowd. Uh, uh, all of those that have dealt in hypnotism will tell you that's not possible. You cannot hypnotize an entire audience. There'll always be one that said, no, I didn't see that. That didn't happen. Uh, there's no other evidence that he was a master in hypnotism. But perhaps the greatest argument is the fact of his resurrection. So let's take a look at these two things. First of all, those that claimed that he was crazy. In John 10, 20, it says many of them were saying he has a demon or and he is insane. Why do you listen to him? And others were saying, these are not the sayings of a demon-possessed person, nor can a demon open the eyes of the blind, can he? And so good arguments back even in scripture as to the fact that Jesus was not cra crazy. Uh, we, we certainly have seen that very clearly. And uh, we know that uh, the miracles that he did attested. Also the teachings that he taught. Uh, certainly are not the teachings or the rantings of someone that you would say was insane or crazy. Uh, they're good common sense, uh, good moral and ethical directions for people and not those of uh, those that are living in a delusion, such as uh, uh, those that have claimed to be Christ or claimed to be God or whatever. And finally, the, the resurrection, the absolute evidence uh, 
Well, let's go down to John 20, 26 through 29. After eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came through the door. Uh, Jesus came in, the door having been shut and stood in their midst and said, peace be with you. And he said, Thomas, reach here your hand and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Now Jesus appeared over a period of 40 days to thousands of people. And they saw that he had actually done what he said he was going to do, live, die, and be resurrected. And Jesus said to Thomas, Thomas, because you have seen me, you believe. Blessed are they who do not see, yet believe. That's you, isn't it? Are you a believer in Jesus Christ? Even though you didn't see the nail-scarred hands and the hole in his side, you didn't need to, did you? There was enough evidence in the words of the Bible, enough proof within itself, Without all of this evidence that uh, Lee Strobel is finding as he gathers the evidence for whether or not Christianity is real, you know already just by reading the scriptures, God has revealed it to you through, your old, through the Holy Spirit that he is the Messiah. He is the Savior of the world and he proved that he had the power over death and that he can deliver what he promised, that is eternal life, by his resurrection. And saying, absolutely not. That's your thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.